Good evening and welcome to Rosh Kodesh Sivan. We are in the third Hebrew month and we are Pastor Ken and Lisa and we're hopefully um, going to all learn together yeah. about what God wants to do in this new month in our, all of our lives. So baby, um, let's just have a word of prayer as yeah. we start. And then we'll, sure. if you if you have a shofar, please, you know, go get it right now. Yeah. We're going to blow the shofar in just a moment. Father, we just thank you for this new Hebrew month. Lord, as we step in, we step in by faith. We step in in obedience. Lord, according to Isaiah 66, you said all flesh shall keep the Shabbats and the Rosh Kodesh, the new moons. And Lord, we count it a privilege, Lord, to us sink our lives, to yes. align our, yes. our lives to your timeline. Yes. Lord, we pray tonight, Holy Spirit, that you would speak through Pastor Lisa. She ministers the word of the Lord and the people would receive mm. everything you have for them. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. And as we blow the show for yes. tonight, let there be an awakening all around the world as we acknowledge the new Hebrew month and what you're going to yes. do um, for, for all the people. Lord, we give you praise and honor and glory in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. So, amen. Let's blow the shofar, right? Amen. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you for what you're about to do. Amen. Oh, we're so excited about this third month of Sivan. And it, like you said, it's the third Hebrew month on the biblical of the biblical new year. And on the civil calendar, it's the ninth month, okay? Mm -hmm. So remember, they go hand in hand. Both months mm -hmm. are wheat harvest. Isn't that wow. amazing? Yeah, right? that's so cool. Sivan is the harvesting the wheat and the figs and the ripening of it. But Kislev, the ninth month, is, also, is when you plant, mm. is when you sow that. Wow. So there's a reaping. This is a time of reaping. Amen. We know on the third day of creation, right? God created the, the trees, the right. land, right? The earth, what does it all represent? The, all those things, it represents fruitfulness, yes. represents resurrection. Yes. You know. So we see how it's tied growth. to harvest. It's yes, growing. It's, it's growing. You know? So we can expect to grow. We can expect Amen. to see a harvest during this month. And Israel's, as Israel's crops grow through the uh, rainy winter season, by this month, the month of civil on, they're ready for harvesting so this represents when everything comes to reality wow that's good things that have been hidden yeah. will be revealed yeah. and so that's in the earth that's spiritually that's naturally, naturally yeah. it applies to every aspect of our life so you need to ask the holy spirit yeah, what has hit what has been hidden you what's know, been planted that yes. needs to, that's gonna start blooming and yes. growing and, yes. and, and popping through that that soil exactly so wow that's so exciting. that because you've been planting all yeah. year long you've been planting in prayer you've been planting in financial yeah. and worship yeah. and the reason the studying of the word and so it is harvest time it is time for us to expect a harvest in our life the sages call Sivan the season of revelation mm. so this is the season of revelation because and it we marks. know we, yeah, we're ahead. getting close to Shavuot right and Shavuot is the giving of the revelation and right. even John's revelation in the New Testament is tied to this yes it's all about um, God releasing that revelation, which is it. the Torah, right? Yeah. Which he did. Which on, is Yeshua. Which is he Yeshua. He is the revelation. Yes. You know, and Messiah. we know that the first time the revelation was revealed through the Torah was on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And so we need to let the word of God become alive inside of us in this month. Let that word begin to bring forth revelation in our life. So, you know, the, during this week, as I've been studying, I've been praying, I heard the word of the Lord. He gave me this word. He said, cadence. And whenever the Lord gives me a word, I, I am always blown away because it's not something that I use all the time. It's not something that I even think about or concentrate on. But yeah. immediately I began to study cadence. And we know that the, the actual meaning, a cadence is a rhythm or a flow of words or music and a sequence mm. that is regular, steady, 
as it were. So we, we can think about an army as they march or yeah. a marching band as they are playing. There's a cadence, there's a rhythm. They're all in step. They're all in unity and one mind and one accord. It sounds like they're flowing. They're flowing. <laughs> exactly. About yes. That. Which is what we've learned over the, the past weeks about the flow. So it's also a sequence of notes or chords mm -hmm. Um, it, it's all it, what it does is it compromises or it, com it complements each other and it brings a music, especially usually they say a prelude mm -hmm. of, um, a, a, a music to a musical phrase. So yeah. it has a phrase. It has a, it has that it's rhythm. Like you're, saying, it's, you're saying it's almost like it has even a message it's carrying. It has a message that it's carrying. So God. Or sound. Yes, you a know, sound. Just, yeah. So as the Lord began to deal with me about cadence, you said the word cadence, I started realizing that God has a rhythm mm -hmm. for us this month. Yeah. He wants us to be in his cadence. He wants us to be in his flow. Yeah. He wants us to be in the rhythm that he is in this month. And he first introduces cadence, believe it or not, when I started studying on the seventh day. Oh, wow. Which is, right? The day of Shabbat. The Sabbath, yes. right? Yeah. The day of rest. That well, is really, that's yeah. powerful. Because yeah. almost every time Shabbat's mentioned, it says because it's because we're following the cadence that God set up. Right. And he set up that rhythm of rest right. on Shabbat. And then we just get to, we get to step into that cadence with him. Yes. And, and we, we get actually, to join him. We actually do. Every yeah. time you honor yeah. Shabbat, you're actually stepping into the cadence. I love it. And you're stepping into the rhythm of what he has for you the upcoming week. I don't, I, I think mm -hmm. that sometimes we forget that on Shabbat right. when we're resting, but he's actually letting our mind, our mm -hmm. bodies, everything rest, but we're also receiving yeah. spiritually. We're receiving from him what mm -hmm. he wants to bring for us in the upcoming week. So he also implemented the feast days throughout mm -hmm. the year as Part a cadence. Mm -hmm. So remember I was talking about music. You usually see cadence is, is something you see throughout music. Notice that Shavuot is the last spring feast day. So cadence in music, it ends a phrase. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very interesting. So it ends a phrase. So Think about this. That makes a lot of sense when you think it's the ending of the Passover season. Right. You know, it's a it's an eighth day, which is an ending day. Yes. It's, but it's also marking a new beginning. Yes. At the same time, it's, yes. ending, it's something new is, is, is blooming. Something new is blooming. And so we know Shavuot ends the spring mm -hmm. and Sukkot ends the fall. Yeah. So that is so powerful. You see how God has a beginning. Yeah. He has an end. It's all about this rhythm. It's all about this cadence. It's being in his flow, being where he wants us to be. So God wants us this season to end with a fresh new rhythm. He wants to give us, he gives it to us on Shavuot, a new rhythm, right? A new stride, yeah. a walk, because we know that revelation was released on Shavuot. So he wants to, us to be able to walk out the revelation that he is going to impart to all of us. So really, it's, it's really an exciting time this month. So the Yovel, we need to think about that which on Shavuot. The Yovel is the is the is the shofar. Yes, um, but it's really our English word is translated as jubilee, which comes from a jubilation, right? And it actually means to flow, right? So it's a it's a release. Yes. So when that Yovel sound was heard i want you to think about it because then the lord began to deal with me he said cadence mm -hmm. rhythm and then he said you need to look at frequency mm -hmm. so when that <laughs> yovo sound went out it was a frequency yeah. i i remember it said it's that, a heavenly frequency yes yes right so frequency it's, sometimes yeah. re is referred to a pitch mm -hmm. it's the number of times per second that a sound pressure wave repeats itself so when we look at Shavuot in the book of Exodus it said that the sound became what louder yeah, and louder that. the yeah. frequency louder and louder and it when you really study frequency you start seeing that frequency is all about energy okay so it releases levels of energy I'm not a scientist and I'm not into any of the physics this is totally the Lord okay <laughs> 
That's so not, I'll that's not your expertise. No, so all you scientists and all watching, you, you could tell us how this works. Yes, yes. The Lord just began <laughs> to, to I, this is the simple version. But we all give off frequencies. Yeah. You know, we all have energy. We're live energy. We all give off frequencies when we run different thoughts in our mind, mm -hmm. which produces an emotion and it functions out or it it um, plays out yeah. in our body. Yeah. So this is really yeah. key on cadence. Why do start? we need it the started, rhythm? Did you say it started in your mind? Yes. Right? Yes. And then it moves to, to your emotions, emotions and then to your body. Yeah. So you can see that frequency. And that will affect life then. Yes. How you're living based on, yes. you know, what, how you, you know, what you were thinking, what right. you were believing in your soul. It affects our life. And, yeah. Wow. That's interesting. But one of the things as I was looking at frequency doesn't go as deep though as the way that cadence does. Okay. So now think about cadence. We're talking about a rhythm with God. So we know that God goes to the deep things. He goes to the core of who we are, what we are, why we're on the earth. He is going to go very deep on the inside of us. Frequencies is things that we hear. Think about that. Loud noises, mm -hmm. um, soft noises, like music, high pitch, that, yeah. low pitch, yeah. right? Yeah. So God wants us to go deeper. He doesn't want us to just hear a sound. And that's basically what he was trying to do with Israel. He wanted them. Of course, he gave that Yovel sound. He released that frequency for the breakthrough, right, to come for but the then, Torah. And there was more to it. There's it wasn't more. Just for them to hear the sound right there what's the next step you're saying the next step is okay now walk with me now get yes. in rhythm with me get in my right. get in my cadence yes and that so that the torah wasn't just to be heard now no. how do we walk together how do we walk you know, it in, out in, yeah so i love it okay go so ahead. it says we hear frequencies all day and it's up to us to process that properly through our thoughts first then through our emotions and then we allow all of that to go through our body or even it goes to our conscience. So we have to be careful of how we're processing frequencies. The father wants to move into cadence this month so that we can activate. When he releases revelation, he's releasing more than a sound. Mm -hmm. He's releasing depth that will cause us to be able to connect with heaven not just on earth amen so how do we move into cadence what does jude say and as i begin to really pray and this is what um the the holy spirit gave me read jude, jude 20 it says but you loved ones continue building yourselves in your most holy faith or on your most holy faith praying in the Ruach HaKodesh or praying in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So the early congregation got a hold of this in they the got, book of Acts. That helps you do what? Get into, Get into the cadence. Okay, got it. Okay? Because you're going to hear the frequency. You're going to feel the energy. There's going to be all kinds of sounds going all around. And the enemy is also going to be releasing frequencies to try to trip us up, to try to stop us. But how do we stay in a cadence? How do we stay in a flow? How do we stay in what God is mm -hmm. teaching us and showing us? How do we stay in that? And Jude, he makes it very clear. Praying in the, in the, the spirit, wow. right? Why? Because praying in the spirit is it, you directly talking to the Lord. We see that the early congregation, think about this, on Shavuot, what happened to the early congregation? Yeah, they were filled with the spirit. They began to pray in other tongues. And yes. The spirit gave them utterance. They and began... it was on Shabbat. It was in this season right. that the people got this gift of a way to sync with God. Exactly. And get in his cadence. Yes. Especially when you think about all that was going around them with the yes. Romans, with, with the, the people, um, the diversity of people against right israel exactly you know, against you know it was and so he didn't how do they hear the right frequency how do they make sure that they're not walking in fear exactly exactly and Behold what did he do you know? and what like, did he actually do for them we know that in the book of exodus he gave them the torah right but in the book of acts we know he also wrote it in their heart but they still had to learn how to walk yeah. this out yeah. right they had to learn how to now that they've received yeshua how do we how do they tie it together 
And this is where we're at. And I feel like this is why the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about cadence, because many of us are, this is a new walk for us. Mm -hmm. We're learning how to put the Torah, to put God's laws and his mitzvot and put them together with what Yeshua said and how he said to live. And in order to do that, we need the Holy Spirit to help us. And so the Holy Spirit came in the book of Acts and he filled them, mm -hmm. right? And he gave them a prayer language. And let's look at what Paul instructs in order to know the will of God for our lives. He comes along in because Romans. The, the Holy Spirit is God. So he knows it's a spirit of God. Yes. So he knows the will of God. So when you tap into that, right. what happens? Romans 8 it says simply, the spirit helps you in your weakness. We don't know how to pray the way we should. But the Spirit himself pleads on our behalf with groanings too deep for words. And the one who searches the hearts knows exactly what the Spirit is thinking because his pleadings for God's people are in accordance with God's will. Yes, so that's that. That's, that's the that's, that's how the, you move into cadence. Yeah. It's through prayer. And, you know, and through prayer and the spirit, prayer in the spirit you need to ask God to fill you with the spirit. Yes. It's a gift. You you know, in the book of Acts, it was frequent. They would, yes. you know, they heard the word and then they then all of a sudden they'd be speaking in tongues and prophesying when they believed it was like, yes. it would come on them. And you realize that every time when God, when you start praying in the spirit, when you pray in other tongues, you get ignited. Why? because his frequency is going through you. I don't think yeah. we realize it. It's a cadence. It's a rhythm. It's a heavenly it's like experience. The, uh, like, it's almost like you're getting a, a direct connection. Yes. You know? Yes. There's not really like a middleman at that. No, point. You there's know, not like a you and God. Man. Yes. You know, through the spirit. Yes, exactly. And it's pure. It's like pure prayer. It's pure word. It's, it's a perfect prayer when you're praying right. in the spirit. You don't know what to pray. Sometimes you pray the best you can. You can get the scriptures, which we, of course you want to do. Mm -hmm. But there's sometimes you just need to, and I do it every day. I hope yes. you, you know, I know do you do it daily. Day. You need but, to. But that's how I, you know, I, I start with the Shema and then I go right into, you know, my prayer language. Yeah. So now we start to understand why the Torah was given in the first place and the Holy Spirit. It was given both times. It was given in Exodus and it was given in the book of Acts. How do we know that? It broke through the natural sound barrier yeah, yeah. and it opened a door into the heavens that released a supernatural power that consumed all who were there. The Israelites were consumed with this it's power. What, because Talk such about a that. miracle of this Yovel shofar, it's supernatural. It's yes. heavenly. It's it's a sound, or which is literally in the Hebrew kol. It's a voice. Yes. And at the same time, it's his wind. Yes. Because to make the sound of the Yovel, it has to, or the God's heavenly shofar. Right. There has to be a wind, so God blows his wind. So it's the it's the word and the voice. Right. And it's, a, it's a word and the spirit together in that yoga to me it's like a heavenly portal it is it's like super yes. you're, you're, and i think that's when the lord the last trump blows yeah god's going to use that shofar to literally carry us with his voice and his yeah. spirit and we're going to go through a he i believe we're going to go heavenly up portal. through a heavenly portal yes. it's going to be through the shofar amen and we're going to go right back to the one blowing it you know yes. it's like oh, so so exciting but in the meantime you're giving us this template a model it's the spirit and the word working together, together. to get you Making sure that you're listening to the frequency of heaven. Yes. Walking in that frequency and also staying in that rhythm. Letting the Holy Spirit keep you in that. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we see here it takes both, it takes both the word and the yeah. spirit together in harmony to get us in this cadence to the deeper waters. What does God want to do this month? He wants to take us deeper. That's what he wants to do. He doesn't want us to be on the surface and yeah. in the shallow. He wants to take us deeper. So when we read the word, it transforms our mind. And then when we pray in the spirit, that word heals mm -hmm. our emotions. And then we can hear correctly mm -hmm. from the Lord, right? Why am I saying and that? That's you... what's affecting our bodies. Yes. Until we get healed, it's going to show up. It's going to show up. It's going to show up somewhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then we're, we're all, it can happen to, it yes, does happen yes, to yes. everybody. It's not just, you know, um, people that are, are, are um, sick. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Basically, this is a lifestyle yeah. that you have yeah. to guard letting those emotions 
tap into the wrong frequency because they're going to produce something in your body or yeah. your life. Your mouth is going to come out yeah. the way you treat your family, the way you, right. um, you, you know, we, we say a lot, a lot of times I say there's like the person went sideways, like they, right. or they fell off the rails. What right. is that? All it is, is they were listening to the wrong frequency, frequency yeah. and they didn't pray in the spirit so they could right. get healed of it. Exactly. Exactly. To I hope bring I'm in, explaining it. Yes, and I, mean, I don't know your sermon, but I'm, in, yeah, I'm trying to yes, exactly. tap it to your flow. So, you know, reading and praying frequently. So we're talking about frequency. So frequency also means the number of times that we do it, yeah. right? Say that again. So people have that so frequent, frequency. All, okay. So you're talking means, about a sound and you're also talking about the number of times you do things, right? So the frequent, reading frequent, frequency. Yeah. Not yeah, just frequency. Frequent, yes. Yeah. How so, many times right. are you doing yes. what you should be doing? You should be doing. Yeah. Yes. Which causes you when you frequent yeah. the word frequent in prayer, yeah. right? Then you, then you get in that rhythm. Then you get it to where God wants you to be. So the anointed sound becomes louder and clearer for us to step into the open door of revelation. The more we read the word, the more we pray in the spirit, we hear, we hear the correct frequency, and then we can walk through the door of revelation. Many people never reach cadence because they have not frequent mm -hmm. the word and they have not prayed in the Holy Spirit. So, you know, what happens is you get a lot of things going on in your life. You get confused, you get frustrated. And like you said, you can even become sick when you're not in the proper rhythm that God has. So what happens is that many times we haven't learned to bring our thoughts first under the word, because mm -hmm. we that's why we read the word. We bring every thought under captivity, under the word of God. You've got to bring it under his word, right? And then the then your emotions have to also come into the word. And we have seen this so many times where people will resist that. They'll go more to whatever is the natural that's going around them. They'll respond in the natural instead of in the spirit. And, and, that's and it knocks temper. you off. That's yeah. the tempter. And Yeshua didn't do that. No, he, he never simply yeah. went to, it is written. It is and written. He didn't respond to listen, turn, you're hungry. Listen, I can give you this, right. so all, you know, cast, you know, temp, do something God said, don't do. It's exactly. going to be okay. God's going to catch you. Yeah. He didn't respond to that. Instead, he said, it is written. And that right. actually drove that wrong frequency out. That way. Exactly. You know, I think the sometimes people are, we're, ex out. we're freak, we're, we're experts or we're frequenting the wrong things. Yes. And then when we need the, the power it's it, not there. Exactly. Exactly. Because it, we were, we, we, we've been drained already right. by the social media, by all the things mm -hmm. we're looking at other people, what they're doing, what they think they should, what you should do. Instead of we, we, we have the 66 books. Yes. We have, it's, the, we, we have, have the revelation. It. Yes. We have the revelation. He's, and that's why it's so important. Like I said, the feast days keep you in yeah. cadence. Yeah. What does that mean? It reminds you the feast days remind you, Hey, I gave you the revelation. I gave you the word. I gave you the spirit. Wake up. Word, spirit, word, spirit. He's trying to get us in that flow so that we will walk out what he wants and to, the, the us to walk the out. And the cadence is, is long. If you keep marching, if you keep, you mm -hmm. know, Alyssa wrote this one in one of her books, shut up and march. You know, yeah. if you keep doing this, you're not going to have time to get out of that cadence right. and listen to that wrong frequency. Right. Because you're you're constantly surrounding yourself with the right thing. So we, we see here that- So you that need to be a freak- for the word and the spirit yes. instead of whatever, yes. you know, yes. you know, you need to be addicted to yeah. the word and yeah. the spirit. So we see society is <laughs> suffering from the lack of cadence. They're suffering from that lack of rhythm. What do they go to? Okay. They go to yoga. They go to meditation. Mm -hmm. They go to healthy eating. They go to exercise. They take many vacations. What are they looking yeah. for? They're looking for a rhythm of life. They're looking for what they would call happiness yeah. and joy. The next party, the next yes. gathering, the next, but it's not, has nothing to do with God being in the center. No. And it's you will you, keep, you're in the center and it never gets fixed like that. No, it will never get fixed. Yeah. And you will always have, this is what happens when you're not not in cadence. Okay. You will always start not and finish. never finish. Yeah, exactly. Start and never finish. Because you're not in that cadence. You're, you're not, not in frequent. the cadence. You're not frequent 
uh, frequent thing that right things. Yeah, yeah. But when you're with God and when you're reading, when you're praying in the spirit, see praying in the spirit, he, it causes you to get in that rhythm. It adjusts you mm -hmm. so that you are in the will of God. What do, let's go back to what Paul originally said. Do you, what is the will right. of God? Period. How many people are saying, what is the will of God for my life? They might say, they might be not saying that, but they're saying, yeah. what is my what destiny? Purpose, what is my what purpose? What is my purpose? Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. Pray, yeah. pray in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And if you pray in the Holy Spirit, God will reveal your purpose. God will reveal his will in your life for every frequency <laughs> or every sound, yeah. every idea, every thought that comes your way. If you'll learn to pray in the spirit before you act, you'll be in the will of God. You'll be in the cadence, the rhythm that he has for your life. Amen. So let's look at what is the difference between cadence and frequency? They go together, but if you don't get it correct, then like I said, you will have a bunch of static, a lot of starting and not finishing, right? So that's that's usually what we see in people's life. But when we read the word, it puts our thoughts about him, right? It puts us in them in order about him. It puts our thoughts about ourselves in order. Why? Because all throughout the word of God, he tells you, this is who I am. This is who you are. Mm -hmm. You are more than a conqueror. You are kings and priests. You are blessed. You are healed. He tells us who we are I mean, when we yeah. read the word, right? Mm -hmm. He tells us that. He says, this is who you are. You're and my called out one. He says, I'm your life. Yes. I'm your prosperity. I'm your health. You know, yes. all those things. Yes. So, he, yeah. the both, word... both things he tells you about him and he tells him you about you yes and your that connection and relationship yeah so when we pray in the spirit he it puts it all together yeah, yeah. and it causes our bodies and even our conscience to be connected to him it's so important that all of that is cannot is connected to the lord we know that yeshua pulled himself away to pray mm -hmm. why because he had to stay in cadence. Yeah. There were so many frequencies yeah. going on yeah. all day long. Yeah. There were frequencies of people pulling well, on him, right? Wanting different, healing. Different contrary beliefs between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yes. And people trying to trip him up because could he really be Messiah? And if he's Messiah, right. we're in big trouble because he's going to take away our power and our, our exactly. prestige and our position. So he you know. pulled himself away and he spent time in prayer. So... And then what happened? Because he spent the time in prayer, he stayed in the rhythm. He stayed in the cadence. He never got off track of God's timeline. He stayed in it. And he also produced shalom in his life. Yeah. And I think that this is part of the problem, especially in today's society. People do not they have, have peace. peace. No. They do not yeah. have They're shalom. Not, yeah. And when we're in the cadence, it, it brings... It causes us to be clear, causes us to be harmonious, right? It causes You're us to have that rhythm. Against the will of God. You're right. sinking to, you know. You're like sinking. You're, you're yeah, you're you're getting an you're getting an upload or a download exactly. from, from heaven. We're both. <laughs> so how does praying and praying in the spirit knock out the static? So when we pray in tongues, the enemy cannot understand this language. Right. It is a direct line to God. And guess what? Many of the many times we don't understand it. So don't don't get on me about I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Don't knock it till you try it, okay? Because once you receive it, well, the precious well, Paul, gift, Paul, it's Paul amazing. Said, he that prays in another tongue. Yeah, I'm gonna you read it. Build up yourself. Right. And then he said plainly, I pray in tongues more than you all, which tells us most of the revelation yeah. that he got was downloaded by the spirit through tongues and interpretation. Yes, yes. You know, so it's pretty powerful. Yeah, so let's read in 1 Corinthians what he actually well, says. Who speaks in a tongue, uh, speaks not to people, but to God. No one understands, but in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. It's it's prophecy, it's prophetic. It's the mysteries of God. Right. For uh, Therefore, let anyone who, 1 Corinthians 14, 13, let the one who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. He may interpret. And, or Roberts was famous for this. Yes. And so, you know, many Ask people don't God. realize that you can, can Pray. pray to interpret. So don't be so wigged out about praying in the spirit. He says you're praying <laughs> mysteries. So go ahead, 
Pray. In, what are you actually doing? You're emptying out all the static and you're, and you're receiving the download from heaven and then stop and, and say, say, Lord, what did I just what, did you, what do you right. want me? What was this all about? And you know what? He might give you a word. He might give you a phrase. He might give you a whole revelation at that point. But we have to start learning. This is a, this month. And it's a process, right? It's a process and it's a maturity and, and it's and a that growth case. that God wants to take us into, right? Because he wants us to understand his rhythm. He wants us to understand the pattern he has for our lives individually, corporately, as we're a part of a congregation. And and as his his um, representatives yeah. all over the earth, yeah. we are we are in cadence all with all of this. Mm -hmm. So God wants to reveal it to us. So we we have to be willing to take the time, yeah. take the time. But this is the one thing I want to say to you. If you have not read the word of God and you're praying in the spirit, mm -hmm. you're not going to interpret because he's not going to give you something out of his um, that from his word a, a, that's not lined up with his yeah. word. So you want, yeah, you you got to know the word. You've got to know yeah. the word. Study, that's why they go it's together a study to show yourself a, a, a proof unto God. What, yes, that needs not be ashamed. Rightly, you have to do that. It's it's part of worship. People don't yes. realize you're reading and studying the word is part of your worship. Yes. It's not just lifting up your hands and no. and doing a you know whatever we do sometimes. But it no. the word study is a worship. Yes. And it's a connection. It's a, you're feeding your spirit. Yes. And praying in the spirit is not just for you to get a release. Yeah. Okay. I want to, I want to say that because a lot of times people in pray in the spirit, they're, they're, they're trying to just get like, a, you know, a release and you do and have that like, emotional. Yes. Yes. High. Yes. Are you talking about? I like and because it's a frequency and because it's a heavenly frequency, a euphoria, like, you yeah. will have that feeling yeah. okay but we need to go yes, deeper past the, past the emotions past the feeling and we need to get to the, to the cadence yes, yes. we need to the get to the things. rhythm we need to get the, to the revelation we need to get to what do i do lord and the holy spirit this is he's our helper he's our teacher he's our guide and this is how he helps us so many people struggle with praying in tongues but we know that Adonai he gave that on Shavuot and we need to celebrate that this month, especially is all about the Holy Spirit. We know first time it happened at Sinai and then in the book of Acts. But now let's look at their stride. Let's look at the rhythm. Let's look what happened after they had the encounter of Shavuot. So we see here that right after the encounter on Shavuot, Shavuot and Exodus, God gives instructions. His he gives instructions. His, he gives his 10 words, his 10 commandments yes. as, a, as a foundation. And then he gives them their Torah. He yes. gives them how to live, how to hit the mark. How to hit That's the mark. That's what Torah actually really means. It's Yara, it comes from Yara. It means to shoot an arrow and hit the bulls. Like God wants us to hit the mark in light. Yes. And, it does, and we, and, you know, in the Bible, it clearly says, you will live when you do them. It's right. not just learning about right. it. You got to do it. Exactly. That's and so where the life comes. We know that he also brings the yeah. elders up to see his glory, right? He gives Moses the plan for the tabernacle. He chooses the artisans to make things in the tabernacle. And Moses is up on the mountain receiving, right? For 40 days, four nights. We know all of that, right? Now let's look in the book of Acts. After Shavuot, what happens? They're filled with the Holy Spirit. They immediately preach and 3,000 are saved, right? What's actually taking place? The same thing that was happening in Exodus, God is establishing his congregation. He's now, and then he's going to take them further. Now he's going to establish his, he's going to establish his protocol for this congregation. How did they bring Torah? How did they knit it together with the Holy Spirit, with this walk, with the, with Yeshua? We see this play out in the book of Acts all throughout Jerusalem. This is the first experience. But in both groups, Israel and at in, and it's at Sinai and, and in Jerusalem, in the book of Acts, both are immediately challenged. Yeah. So what can we learn from this? You will always be challenged on yeah. your frequent stride. Yeah. You will always be challenged. They were challenged. The Israelites were challenged. The congregation in, in Jerusalem, 
they were challenged. And why? The enemy's job is to create the static. Mm -hmm. He is he's to create to the stop, wrong frequency. To stop the cadence. That, yes. Because that is really trying to stop the kingdom. Yeah, it's to Move stop the kingdom. Forward. Yeah. It's exactly. Possessing ground. Exactly. Exactly. That's what he starts to cause do. confusion, cause static, let the people get caught up in this going on, this going mm -hmm. on, the golden calf, the right. you know, all of the, the Korah's uh, rebellion, whatever right. it is. It's always right. gonna be something. Right. It's always static, right? Yeah. So we see um that what is he what is his number one tactic? And I want you to pay attention to this. It's always fear. Fear. What did he do to them at Sinai? He caused fear. Yeah. Where is Moses? What's happened? Fear, 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 fear. He all throughout their time where yeah. no water, That's right? Great. From the very beginning, fear, fear. And so now let's let he also does the same thing, right? In the book of Acts also, but let's see the spirit of fear. It will always mess up your frequency and then your stride or your walk will be off if we don't put it yeah. under control. But let's look at Daniel. Okay. Daniel was in captivity from the very beginning. He purposed or determined in his heart mm -hmm. that he was not going to defile himself. What was he saying? I will not lose my cadence. Yeah. And let's read it. And Dan, and what did he way, do? In Acts 15, one of the first instructions they give the, the nations coming into Messiah, they, it's the same exact words that, that the, the new people coming in should not profane themselves. Defile right. themselves. It's the same exact word if same you translate it back into the Hebrew because yeah, that's good. that gets us back into the static. Yes. And Daniel, look what he does. Daniel 6. When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened, his chamber toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day. Mm -hmm. he, he's getting in that, right? He's getting in that cadence and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done pre previously. So we see here that Daniel, even though he, they tried to stop him with fear and say, you cannot pray. He didn't. Yeah. He, he knew he knew how to keep synced. He knew, he how, knew to how to keep sick. in that cadence. Yes. And so you remain in cadence, even in a lion's den. So I want to just tell you yeah. that. And the and reason God can shut the mouth of the lion. He shut like the he did mouth. For, for, for Daniel, because Daniel refused to bow. He refused to bow and he did not stay yeah. out of that cadence. Yeah. So we can see that our prayer life is so important and it keeps us that we know the enemy is going to try things. We know he's going to do things. But that prayer life is what protects us from the lions. If we yield to it, mm -hmm. then they're going to eat us. But because he did not yield, God shut them out. And we have to have faith and trust that God will take care of the lions in our lives. Yeah. He will shut their mouths. Mm -hmm. We have to trust in that. Also, we have to know that we cannot be plucked out of his hand. John 10, I want. I just thought this was so I amazing. I hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given to me them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand i mean it's two times he says Eaten. cannot be snatched i got you i got you in my hand you yes know? or even isaiah says you're written engraved in the palm of my hand yeah. you know it doesn't matter what the enemy does it doesn't matter what tactics he throws at us what static it doesn't matter yeah. he's got you yeah. he's got you just remain be like daniel yeah. don't bow don't don't get out of that cadence and now let's we look at know his voice we gotta know his and voice the only way you're gonna hear you know that yo bell the voice it's you need the wind and the word you've got and it's through prayer yeah and through praying in the spirit that's yeah. that's a supernatural yes. connection yes. yeah it's a gift it it's a gift. a gift it's good because you're tapping into a, a the the spirit's language yes and, and you know, with Daniel, just think about Daniel. Well, that you're tapping into the spirit's frequency. Yes. Again, it's all those you can use it all. All of you it. You know, yeah. as a metaphor. But you know, when you think and about that's why there's so many much opposition in you know by religious people and mm -hmm. by the yeah. worldly people saying you you know there just people that work there's so many books about this <laughs> wildfire and and all that, but. They cannot deny it is in the Bible. It was, yeah. and it's, and if you start studying, you're going to actually find reference to it, even in the Tanakh, the Old Testament. It was a way God used, it's a prayer language. Right, and right. It's a prayer language. 
that he gave us. And it's, it's a, such a it's gift. a gift of communication. And it releases the revelation. I don't think we realize that's why the enemy doesn't and, want us to do it. You see it, it actually happened after Sinai when they were when when Moses needed help. God took this his Holy Spirit, the spirit of Moses, and he put his spirit yeah. on the 70. Remember, and there was two yeah, that weren't in yeah. the end, and they prophesied. Yeah. Um, it, this is what happened. They were releasing revelation. And yes. that's why Joshua ran to Moses and said, Hey, you know, these two guys are outside the camp. They're they're releasing revelation. I don't think it's right. And they said, No, I wish all God's yes. people would have this prophetic spirit. Well, book of Acts confirms that. Yes, amen. You know, amen. So, so we see that. When, like you said, when we pray, it releases revelation. And when we look at Daniel, he released the end time yeah, revelation. Did. There's so How much. Did he do that? There's so much. He got through the prayer. Yeah, yeah. He's in exile. In exile. Yeah. In exile. And he's having to stand up against the first King yes. Nebuchadnezzar, then his son Belshazzar. Yes. You know, they're all are not copy at, no. at all. No. You know, and then the then the Chaldeans are going to come in and take them all away. I mean, it's it's crazy. Yeah, but he remained. Yeah. So this is what this. I, so I just want to encourage you. It doesn't matter what's going on in the earth and the world. It doesn't matter. And things might get worse. Yeah. Remain with God. Read His Word. Yeah. Pray in the Spirit. Stay in His cadence because He has something very special that He wants you to do. And don't let the enemy throw you off. So now let's look here. And like I said, the enemy always strikes when when you're when you're moving in the will of God. And we see here that Peter and John they go up to the temple and they pray for the lame man right and let's just look what happens after the lame man is healed and souls are saved acts yeah. four as peter and john were speaking to the people the koanim and the captain of the temple and the sadducees came up to them they were indignant because peter and john were teaching the people announcing in yeshua the resurrection of the dead so they grabbed them put them in jail until the next day for it was already evening so we see that here they here he comes to the enemy like i said the tactic is fear he tries to cause them to be afraid. We're going to throw you in jail. We're going to beat you. We're going to harm you. We're going to discredit you. We're going to mock you. We're going to do all these things, right? But look at Peter and John's response, Acts 4.20. What they do they say to them? stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. They couldn't stop. They could not yeah. stop speaking. So don't yeah. let the enemy, the fear, take your voice. Don't ever stop preaching the gospel. Don't ever stop sharing your faith with people. You, you have the resurrection power. You, though, If you're filled with the spirit, you have that anointing to preach, to teach. You are his representatives on the earth. So don't allow Satan to cause you to... To fear and look what they do immediately when they are released look what they do in acts chapter 4 verse 29 they and now, pray and and now lord look at their threats and grant your servants to speak your word with utmost courage or boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders um, take place through the name of your holy servant yeshua when they had prayed the place where they were gathered was shaken <laughs> sounds like sinai yeah. uh, exodus 19 and they were all filled with the ruach hakodesh the holy spirit and they began to speak the word of god with boldness so it's like it's a, again it's happening over and over yes it keeps happening all through yeah. the book of acts so they prayed they didn't run away they got with the congregation they prayed so this is another um lesson for us when the enemy starts throwing static in your life when he's trying to cause you to fear you know pray in the holy spirit and if you need extra prayer, go with your brothers and sisters and say, listen, I need agreement. Mm -hmm. I need you to pray with me right now that I will stay on course, right? This is what Peter and John were doing. Pray with us that we'll stay on course. They that the gospel the congregation. You will need be carried. A, you, need, you need a congregation you need to help it. you. We can't, the, the prayer of agreement. Yes, the, the it's prayer so of the elders, all that is, is is needed. And so what happens, we see that it, it spreads, of course, all throughout the book of Acts. So Adonai has laid out the plan for us this month. He releases a fresh wind, a revelation on Shavuot, and then he equips us. So we need to be ready for that. This is a new, you're going to, you're going to experience a fresh and a new. When we come up on the feast fresh day of Shavuot, fire, fresh, yeah, fresh, fresh wind, expect that. to yeah. say, Lord, fresh I want it all. I want it all. Where, how do you want to catapult me? Where do you want to catapult me in my, in my life? Where do you want me to grow? Whatever's been hidden, whatever, I, whatever is planted in my life, it let it be revealed, yeah. Lord, so that I can, I can walk it out. I can be in the stride, this rhythm that you want me to be in. 
the letter, there's always a Hebrew letter attached to the month and the letter is Zayin and it means weapon. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? It means to arm, to arm oneself. That's the letter attached to this, um, this month. And let's powerful. look at it. Ephesians 6, it's, 12. It says our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the worldly forces of this darkness and against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist when the times are evil. And after you've done everything to stand firm. So we see that we've got to put on the whole armor. That needs to be done every day of your life. Yeah. Put on the whole armor of the Lord so that you're able to stand against his static, his the wrong frequencies, so that you're able to resist that what he's trying to put in your thought life and trying to hurt your emotions or what he's trying to put on your body. You've got to resist it. And the only way you can resist is if you armor so that we're able to resist yes. the enemy yes so in the book in the month the first time the month of saban is actually mentioned it's no coincidence it's in the book of esther yes. so we know the story of esther haman had written a decree that all the jews will be killed but Mordecai, right? He, we know Esther is placed in the palace by Adonai. And Mordecai reminds Esther. And the Lord was mm -hmm. being a shemi. He, Mordecai remind Esther of the word. Yeah. She had to be reminded. Why? Because yeah. she was in there with all of those yeah. heathen. Yeah. And he had to remind her, there's a covenant. God has mm -hmm. a covenant with the house of Israel. He established it with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we will not be destroyed, Esther. Either you're going to step up or God will bring a victory from yeah. another way, but this yeah. is the covenant. So what, what really stuck out to me is that God is going to use you to remind people mm -hmm. of his word this month, this yeah. month. Yeah. And guess what? He's going to send us people. That's going to remind us of his word. Yeah. He's going to remind us of the covenant. He promised promises. Many of you've received prophetic words. Maybe they were years ago. Don't be shocked when someone comes up and repeats the prophecy, repeats the word. Why? Because God's reminding you, I gave you this word yeah. and you will fulfill it. Amen. Yeah. So what is, what does, um, first Mordecai of course gives the word. And then we see that Esther does something. What we're talking about, she prays, she prays and, fasts. and she yeah, fasts, yeah. right? She does, she's She's getting on the right frequency. Yes, She's gonna get yes. In God's she cadence. has to get it's, in yeah. that cadence. Yeah. So she, we see here that she reads and she and she fasts, which breaks. What actually the praying and the fasting breaks the spirit of fear. Yeah. It breaks it which, off of which her. Probably is the spirit of Haman. Yes, it's the spirit of fear because it comes from Amalek, and that's yes. what the Amalek does. He causes us, yeah, to he fear. causes us to fear, and we see that what happens after she prays. She has a revelation. She has a she has an idea. God gives her an idea. He tells her how to reveal to the king what Haman has done. But let's actually look. We we know that Haman wrote a decree to kill the Jews, and the king tells Esther that decree cannot be broken, right? right. Yeah. And that right. a new decree yeah. must be written. And it just so happened that when it happens in this month. So this let's month. read yeah. this. Esther 8. Eight, you should issue a decree in the king's name for whatever you want concerning the Jews. Seal it with the king's signet ring because a decree written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring can't be rescinded by anyone. The king's secretaries were summoned at that time. And on the 23rd day of the third month, the month of Sivan, yeah. a decree was written according to everything Mordecai ordered concerning the Jews to the army commanders, governors, and officials of the provinces from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces to each province in its script, to its people, to their language, and also the Jews in their script and language. They wrote in the name of King Ashashverosh mm -hmm. and sealed it with the king's signet ring. They sent letters by couriers on horseback riding fast horses used to the king's service and bread from the royal stock. The letter said that the king had granted the Jews in every city the right to assemble and defend their lives by destroying, killing, and exterminating any force or any people or province that would attack them, their little ones or their women, or would try to seize their goods as, as plunder. So we see yeah. that it happened in this and month. You can't. 
discount that we're in this yes. month of giving the Torah, the, right. the, the decrees. The decrees. Forth, and know? also the Holy Spirit was reminding me that evil decrees that have been pronounced yeah. over your life can be reversed. Can be reversed. Yes, absolutely. So if you've got a bad report in your body, this is the month right now for yes. you to extend your faith and say, but God wrote a different decree by his stripes. I am healed financially. If you have sown seed and you have planted, you go back and, and see what God's decree is. You shall reap what you have sown. You shall be blessed. You shall be prosperous. What is the decree over our children? me and my household shall be safe. So this is the month for the, the bad decrees to be reversed. But I also want to remind you of something. Several months ago, we did something. Yeah. We wrote petitions. I want to remind you of that. We're, we're this month, Esther, the, yes, the it was the fast of right. Esther. Yeah, we so we need it. to revisit those petitions. But this time as you're revisiting them, I want you to look at them and, and rewrite them as a decree. Write what the Lord says about what are you asking for? Now find the scripture and now write it as a decree and say, this is what the Lord decrees about this request. In the name of Yeshua, I call it done in the month of Sivan. Amen. So we need to come into that, that, um, that, that cadence. He's released it. He's releasing it right now. Decrees. Because, because this is a month also Shavuot is, is where God gives his people, his authority, his authority. The fourth, the fourth piece, the fourth day is all about governing and authority. So this is the month God saying, okay, mm -hmm. use that authority. Yes. To 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 sync with me, to get on my frequency, Amen. and to establish my kingdom in your life, my will, Amen. That's my right. plan over the enemy's plan. Use that authority. Go in yes. my name. Go in my authority. Yeah. So we need to we need to tap into that this month. Amen. Now let's continue to look at this letters in. Remember, it means to arm, but it also represents something else. It represents a weapon, a sword. Remember, I talked to you about this, the, the whole armor of God. So what are we going to use? We're going to use the sword of the spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, teach me how to wield the sword. Teach me how to use the sword of your spirit. When I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, Lord, show me how to wield that. It, let me see it as a sword that's annihilating all the wrong static, all the wrong frequencies, and it's mm -hmm. causing me yeah. to step into this cadence, hallelujah, that you call me to, to walk in. So we know that God equips us this month for spiritual warfare amen the tribe that's associated is a a lot of people's favorite tribe zebulun why mm. because zebulun was the one that received the blessing yeah, yeah. they received the blessing moses gave him the blessing jacob gave him the gave them the blessing right we also know that with that blessing came a responsibility they had funded mm -hmm. the tribe of issachar right issachar was devoted to studying the torah why use their blessing to help fund the basically fund the God fund, 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 God, fund, fund, fund the, the Torah yeah yeah because Israel could not stay in cadence yeah, without, without the Torah they, needed, everything they is, cannot the Torah is everything the Torah is everything and the moment you got rid of the Torah you got famine you got lack you got yes. the sword you got everything bad happened yes so they had to make sure yes and so God supernaturally blesses mm -hmm. this Zebulun. tribe yeah. Zebulun. And he gives them, he gives them their destiny, right? So they had to hear the proper frequency. They had to discern. Issachar had to, had to discern. It says they discerned the times and the seasons. The only way they could discern that is through the Torah. So one of the things I just want to encourage those of you who God has blessed and he has blessed you abundantly. God didn't give you that just to build your own houses and have your own things. He doesn't care if you have that, okay? He he delights in you enjoying, but he also gave you that blessing for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And that purpose is to bless or fund the gospel mm -hmm. of the Lord. And that's why he that's why he's given it to you. And if you will take that and you will do what Zip, Zebulun did, you will continue to see a flow of blessing that will come in your life that it, it will never run out and because more than money. Yes, I'm talking yeah. about every yes. Yeah, because a blessing you might be blessed with money, but you can't live just on no, money. You, no. you need 
You need that, you know, to have a good life. You, God wants to give you a Joy family, and, yes. a family that loves one another, yes. and you, you know, you're working together, and yes. you're doing what God's called you to do as a family, whatever that is. Yes. So, so yeah, you many, need the health that goes with it. You yes, know, all, all yes. those things. Which, when He releases that blessing, He's He's calling you. He's giving you that purpose, you know. To and if your congregation now, I'm going to talk about finances because if your congregation is in need and you have the ability to help, to help. Yeah. you need to help because why did he bless you to be a blessing through the finances if it's something like that or if they need someone to serve yeah. and you have the capability do of it. doing yeah. what they're asking yeah. don't sit there on your chair and do nothing don't say well i don't have time no if he's giving you that gift then do it in the congregation do it unto the lord do it unto the lord and that's going to Get keeps you in, you in that, the cadence yeah, for sure keeps you in the flow keeps you in your purpose and when, keeps you when in you're his not plan. doing that that's awake the enemy can get people out a lot easier and i call it like this yeah when you don't have skin in the game yeah if you're not serving if you're not giving you know where your where your treasure is there your, your heart's yes. not there if your treasure's not there if there's no skin in the game yes. the enemy can pull you out a lot easier yes um, and there's many people that are gifted and talented that are sitting in the, the in the chairs yeah, of the congregation on the sidelines. and they're not they're, they're not, not giving the back they're to the, the lord game. and the congregation is suffering yeah, yeah. and god is not pleased with this and by doing that there's going to be some repercussion that you get. There's yeah. going to be some consequence be that you get because he's given it to us so that it can get flow it. through yeah. us, right? And this was his will for all of Israel, right? All of the all of the tribes to function properly the way that he had them to function. Why? So that the land would be blessed, so that the land would be a a um testimony to the yeah, nations like to the nations what yeah. what god is doing for them because he is the true and and only god amen so we remember that like we said that this month is about reaping so god wants you to reap those of you who have sown if you have sown in your finances and you have given you've sown of your time you've sown of your talent this is a season for you to reap but also it was the when Israel was called, to, he, he called them to bring the bickering, yeah, right? right? The first fruits, the, the first, fruit first harvest. fruits first of fruit harvest fruit. to the, him. He says, yeah. bring me those first fruits. And what Israel would actually do is they would go in, they would present this to the Lord. Why? Because they were walking in faith saying, Lord, I thank you for this, what you've yeah, given me. Your, you've given us this great land and you've all give, these yes. the trees and the fruit and all, we give us houses that we didn't build. Right. You know, it, they, they recognize it came from yes. God's goodness and grace and they were returning to him. And they returned to him fruit. what he, he gave, but also they were also believing for a, 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 a even bigger yeah. harvest. Yeah. And so we have to believe that in our lives and we have to believe that this is the season for harvest for souls. Come on people, this is the month for our families to re to get born again. This is the month to see our congregations grow and people find Yeshua as their Lord and Savior. So I encourage you, share your faith. We also know that this is the month where we renew our yeah. vows, right? It's like renewing our wedding vows to the Lord. The sages talk about Shavuot, and they say that Israel receives the Torah fresh and, afresh and anew. Yeah, I think it's amazing. And this is the season for us to receive his word afresh and anew. When you're reading the word this month, read it like you've never read it before. Ask the Holy Spirit. You always do this. Lord, show me, speak to me. What do you want to say to me before I even read the first word? And when you do that, the Holy Spirit's able to speak. He's able to get you on track on, on your life. So let's look at how um, they position themselves to receive the first time at Shavuot. Number one, we know that the children arrived at Mount Sinai, right? And he declared to them that you are a kingdom of Cohen yeah. and a holy nation. We know that the apostle Peter comes along in 1 Peter 2, 9, and says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, right? Call for the praises of him or called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we see here that God puts a call on their life. He, he makes them distinct. 
And I think that we have to realize that this month, God is called, we are the called out ones. We are not like the world. We cannot compromise. We cannot do what the world does. We have to truly be those Kohenim, the called out ones, right? The ones that separate themselves. We are distinct. And you know what? That might make you seem to the world like you're a little weird, but I like distinct better. I think it, it sounds better, right? <laughs> so we also see that they do something else on the second day of Savan, right? As they do this distinction, then that they, they, um, as they're separating themselves, I'm sorry, the third day, we see here that they, they prepare they, they, themselves, they right? Wash, they've got to wash their clothes. They've got to wash themselves for yes. the third day because that's going to be the day they're going to receive, yes. receive yes. that the revelation. Yes. So number one, I'm sorry, Miss, they're set apart. Then they are distinct. Then they prepare themselves. And the same thing applies in our life right now. We need to understand that we're set apart. We're distinct we're and now we're preparing ourselves. What are we preparing ourselves for the cadence mm -hmm. to receive the rhythm, to receive what God is telling us this month. Amen. Three days. It says separation, right? That they prepared position yourself for a renewal. I want to give you some scriptures. Let's read Amos three, three. Do Two walk together except they make an appointment and have agreed. Except they make an appointment. It's, it's little, literally means that they both have to be, uh, uh, they're appointed to come to the same place. Exactly. Which is the feast days. Which is the you feast know, days. That's, and Shabbat, all that. Yes, you know? yes. Yeah. So you God- can walk with somebody. This was a great thing to think about. In relationships. Yes. And those of you who are not married yet, you're mm. you're maybe leaving God for a husband or wife. If the person has no intention of walking this walk with right. you, right? Why? You're never going to be at the, the right place at the right time no. together. You're not going to be, it's not a divine appointment. No. Because you're not in agreement. Right. And we know that in the garden, yeah, that Adam and Adam and I walked together yeah. at the cool of the day. So yeah. it was an appointment. There and was an appointment. That God strolling in the garden was his cadence. Yes. And then when Adam was not there, there's a actual lament. It God mm. said God saying, Adam, where are you? Right. You were walking with me. Where'd you go? Right. Because they were meant to walk in agreement. Like they were they, yes. were, they had an appointment. They in the garden every night they, they they would stroll together and now Adam, yeah. Adam's not there yeah he, he got he listened to the static of the, the static? serpent and yeah. it, you know you get that's all in the sermon that's like yeah. really what the static we're of the reading serpent. when we're reading the word yeah. when we're praying it needs to be an appointment yeah make an appointment and you need to be regular that you yes talk about the frequent, frequent. frequent yes frequency they yeah. get a, a set time. Yes. You know, some of you are flow people and I understand that. But when it comes to, there's got to be some disciplines in your life yeah. for the most important things, especially is the, the time with God. You yes. got to find that time. And it's a, it's yeah. put in your calendar. If you have to, uh, like if it's early in the morning, like some people do, or it's late at night, right. or whenever you know, you can do that time. It's very important to set that time because yes. if you don't frequent that time, yeah. you're going to, there's going to be other things that are going to come it's in and get, it's going to get eventually get you right you know, off to, off of the cadence. Off. It definitely is. Now let's look at Galatians 5, 25. Let's first read it in the, um, the common Jewish Bible. version. Okay. Yeah. Since it is through the spirit that we have life, let us also through the spirit that we order our lives day by day. Now reading, Amplified says, let us go forward, walking in line, our conduct controlled by, by the, the spirit. spirit. And then the message. Since this is the kind of life we've chosen, the life of the spirit, let us make sure we do not just hold it as an idea in our heads, just a Greek min mindset, right. or a sentiment in our hearts, but work out its implications in every detail of our lives. So when we pray in the spirit, he says it right yes. there. Yeah. When we are led by the spirit, when we pray in the spirit, he works out every detail of our lives. I don't think we even realize that. The power. The power yeah, of that, praying yeah. in the spirit. I encourage you, if you've never been filled with the spirit, it's a gift. If you're born again, we know that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. But when something, it's a, a different work, it's a separate work. And the, what happens is when you yield your tongue mm -hmm. and it's really yielding your will over to the Lord, then you will speak 
and other tongues that, you know, the book of James yeah. talks about this. The tongue is the strongest part of our body. Right. So when we yield, it sets the course of your life. Yes. Says, James says that. It yes. Sets your course, whether you, what, how you speaking, how you're praying, how you're praying. Yeah. And so it's a gift and God yeah. wants to give it to you. So if you're born again, all you have to do say, Lord, fill me with your gift of the Holy spirit. Give me this precious gift where I could pray in your heavenly language. And Lord, if there's anything blocking this inside of me, whether it's not having faith, whether it's a wrong doctrine that I was taught, Lord, if there's unforgiveness, you will not pray in the spirit. You, If you are holding unforgiveness in your heart, you will not be able to pray in the Holy Spirit. You've got to release everything. Mm -hmm. Your will must la be laid out on the altar. Say, Lord, you know, it's not a cliche, not my will. Your, it's it's a real thing that you do. You lay it on the altar and then just ask him, say, Lord, fill me, take control of my tongue. And then just begin to praise. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I worship you. I mean, really just not on a, just out of your heart, begin to just praise and praise. And it, sometimes it takes time, but the Holy Spirit, when you're sincere, he will come. And all of a sudden you're going to feel on the inside of your, inside of your spirit, you're going to feel it. The frequency is going to start. You're going to feel it. And when you do just by faith, just let it come out of your mouth. Let it, it's a sound. It could be a phrase, I, whatever, just let it out. And when you do that, all of a sudden it will roll out of you. But I just encourage you um, to be filled with the spirit because it's so, so important in our lives. It's a tool to a keep gift. us in the and cadence, the, the can't, rhythm. Can't get through. We it's cannot like, it's like, get through. It's a fire, it's fire wall. It's a fire it's wall. It's a spiritual fire wall. Yes. And you cannot, you, it can't be hacked. Right. It cannot know, be it hacked. Cannot it hack cannot. That, that, that line with God. So I encourage you. So this month, like, like it's harvest time. It's revelation time. It's uh, a time for us to be in the cadence. Yes. Amen. 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 Father, we just thank you, lift Lord. up every person that's watching tonight. That we step in it by faith. This new month, we step into this third month of Sivan by faith. This month where we're going to be fruitful, where we're going to grow, we're going to receive your authority. We're going to move in your power and your in, in the power of the Spirit. We're not only going to be moved by a k uh, a frequency or a cadence we're going to sink to your frequency we're going to sink to your cadence we pray for any person who's watching who never accepted yeshua as their lord and savior we pray tonight that the holy spirit would make yeshua real to you and you would say yes to yeshua just ask him in your heart say lord yeshua come into my life be my lord be my king i yes. confess with yes. my mouth yes. i believe in my heart Thank that you, you lord. are the son of god i make you the lord of my life and i believe with all my heart that you have been raised from the dead on the third day i will no longer live for myself but i will live for you yeshua who died for me and i ask you now to fill me yes fill, and everyone pray yes. the prayer, fill yes. me yes. with the ruach yes. fill me with the spirit yes. with the evidence of speaking in tongues ignite me with that fire of the spirit that was poured out on Shavuot on Pentecost and let me now pray yes. in the spirit in tongues and prophesy and Lord yes we also pray that we would be able to interpret yes Lord as we pray in the spirit we thank you Holy Spirit that you're moving fresh and anew in the lives of your people they are in your frequency tonight and they are in the cadence the rhythm and they are synced with the spirit Lord, we thank you right now for the best is yet to come for your people. Fall fresh on each and every person, on their family, fall on their on their loved ones that don't know Yeshua. Fall on the people that don't um, have been, uh, that that they've been praying for and believing God to be saved. Lord, we believe that this is harvest season and we pray that you, the prayer that yeshua prayed we pray that the lord of the harvest would send for the laborers and yes, lord, yes. into that harvest field yes. and lord we're going to answer that prayer and say here yeah. i am lord send me yes, to be that I labor am. into yes. the harvest field in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Lord, as the people are are asking you for the Spirit, I thank yes. you that today they will speak yes, in yes. that prayer language. They will be filled with the Spirit. They will be immersed in the Spirit, just like you did in the book of Acts, just like you did in the book of Numbers. The Spirit fell. Lord, fall fresh on the people tonight and ignite them 
empower them to do and arm them yes, to arm do them. everything you've yes, called them to yes. do this month. I thank you for prosperity. Yes, I thank yes. you for blessings and that, yes. that, that exceed our expectations. Yes, because Lord. you, Lord, will do exceedingly abundantly yes. above. We are all we can even ask or even think. We thank you for this great new month. Yes. And we thank you for even the decrees of the enemy yes. being reversed because yes. we decree and declare yes. your kingdom and coming. Your we will, declare yes. your will, will be, be done. done. And we declare that your decrees overpower and yes. over all of Haman's Lord, wicked Lord. and all of Amalek's wicked decrees. In the name of Yeshua Messiah, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. And everybody said, amen. I want to amen, encourage you amen. to make sure you do give. If When Shavuot comes, it's just in a few days. Yeah. Um, uh, give a, a first fruit offering to the Lord. But also at the new month, give a new month seed of honor offering. Pray about it, who you should give that to. Um, because that is a way that you're setting this month. In yeah. order, you're saying, Lord, I thank you that this month is, is about what you want to do in my yeah. life. And I'm sowing this Rosh Kodesh offering. It's scriptural to do it. And I encourage you to, to do it. And um, until next time, we will see you. And we love being with you. Yeah. Have an awesome Rosh Kodesh, Kodesh. And, and an amazing Shavuot 5784. God bless you all.